G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for a look at some of the better AFL draft prospects that went undrafted in this year's draft. Now, if you're following along uh, with all the action, particularly on the live stream, uh, you'll know that there has been quite a few you know, sliders that uh, went way later than we expected, as I've covered on the most recent video on my channel. But there were a handful of players that surprisingly went undrafted uh, altogether. So in this video, I'm gonna try and uncover some of the ones that I think were the most highly rated that didn't get drafted. Little bit arbitrary, little bit subjective. I'm sure if you're a particularly um, committed draft watcher, then there's probably a whole heap of players that you expected to get drafted that didn't. But I've picked out uh, seven or eight, I think like that. What? <laughs> but I've picked uh, about seven or eight, I think and uh, I'm gonna go through them one by one. Before I get into it, guys, uh, you know that I like to have this little goal of having the people who watch my videos, 50% of them, subscribe to the channel. And we are currently at 49.9%. I know, nobody freak out, this is crazy. But I've never seen us hit 50% before. Uh, so if there's anyone who watches the channel and is enjoying the content, please consider subscribing. I would much appreciate that. Or if you're new to the channel and looking for AFL content to sustain you, particularly around the draft, but of course, all through the 2024 AFL season, subscribe to this channel. But anyway, let's crack into it. Uh, in somewhat of the order of which th it surprised me, uh, I'm gonna go through each prospect that missed out and start with Cohen Sanchez from Western Australia. Cohen Sanchez is a 177 centimeter uh, small forward that played for WA and not only played for WA in the chance, but kind of starred for them being an all Australian forward in this year's national championships. He's a pretty skilled player, um, pretty high footy IQ. And this one I expected to probably be you know, a second round selection, potentially early 30s. But Sanchez just seems like a, a pretty natural sort of footballer who can play forward, obviously, and also roll through the middle as a smaller midfielder too. There were links to, you know, particularly the West Australian clubs and Fremantle who were on the market for a small forward. They ended up not taking one. But Sanchez had a good year. Uh, I read somewhere he had a few minor health uh, setbacks this year. No idea what they were. So it, is, it was a bit of a surprise not to see him drafted, not only undrafted in the national draft, but overlooked in the rookie draft too. So potentially he'll be a trainer option this year. The next one is another small forward, this time from the Sandringham Dragons slash Vic Metro in Tarkin O'Leary, who did get a fair bit of pre-draft buzz. Uh, so another one that I was a little bit surprised did not get picked up. He's more or less a small forward. I think he's about 178 centimeters, but he's, he's one player that sort of transitioned from being small forward to more of a wingman this year and uh, played you know the entire year on the wing for the Sandringham Dragons. He's also very athletically gifted. He actually finished first in the 2KM tri uh, time trial at the draft combine with an impressive time of five minutes and 48 seconds. I also saw him like, you know reportedly linked to clubs like St Kilda and West Coast prior to the draft so again a little bit of a surprise perhaps the fact that he is more of a small midfielder than a genuine small forward was what saw him overlooked in both drafts but there you go Tarkin O'Leary is still a free agent next we'll talk about Cade Delarue from the Dandenong Stingrays again this guy was never a certainty to get drafted so perhaps this is just me projecting my own personal opinion but this was a kid that I liked and uh, spoke about on the channel pre-draft he is a 183 centimeter forward midfielder or midfielder forward uh, he's a pretty smart player, clean hands, uses the ball really well going inside 50. He's also another player who's just turned 18, so has developmental scope. The one thing with Delarue that uh, has become apparent after doing a bit more research is that uh, he is a little bit injury prone. So he did his ACL, I think in 2021. And this year he had his season cut short as well from a foot injury, but he did play in the national championships. But due to that foot injury, couldn't test at the national combine. So perhaps injury is what kept Delarue out. And again, he could be a train on option uh, for clubs to sign as a supplemental player or he can try his luck next year. Next, we'll talk about the second player who was all Australian at the under 18 champs this year that did not get drafted. And this one is Will Patton from South Australia. He's kind of like a medium tall defender, stands at about 192 centimeters and is a strong intercept player. He's an on-field leader. He reads the play really well and has obviously become a quite an accomplished uh, intercepting option in defensive 50. He's got versatility as well with the ability to play on talls and smalls. Perhaps if I could speculate as to what maybe worked against him was he's kind of in that tweener height, they call it. So you're in between being a medium-sized player 
and a key position player at 192 centimeters. So again, maybe that's one where clubs probably couldn't work out his best position, but his rebound game is solid. He's obviously a good defender and uh, a big surprise that he went undrafted. Then there's Will Brown, uh, another player from the Sandringham Dragons, who is a very tall midfielder at 195 centimeters and was actually the captain of the Sandringham Dragons. So again, I don't think he had you know the most outstanding year, but he did finish the year really well and was best on ground in Sandringham's grand final win. I think that performance included about three goals and about 18 possessions. Um, and he's another player that has diversified his game, plays a bit of midfield, but some people say he plays his best uh, as a forward. So a versatile midfielder uh, who can win clearances and can float forward and uh, was best on ground in the CTL grand final. It surprised me that he didn't get picked up at all. Another player I expected to get drafted was Nathan Philactides from the Oakley Chargers who uh, probably got overlooked because clubs couldn't spell his name. But uh, either, either way, like his reputation throughout the you know pre-draft process was always that he was going to go probably in the 30s or 40s. He is an undersized defender, and along with Will Patton, was an AFL Academy member too. So he's got quite a small stature, but he's a pretty run-and-gun sort of defender with a great rebound game. He's super quick, super athletic, plays with a really aggressive intent as well with the ball in hand, and apparently comes from a hurdling background as well, which explains the athleticism. He's apparently had a taste of VFL action as well, so against senior experienced uh, men, he played for Richmond's VFL side, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but one thing I did read as well, that he missed the combine with all the testing is done due to a shoulder injury as well. So perhaps that worked against him. And I've talked about in previous videos that uh, it was a competitive draft for smaller to medium defenders. A lot of them got taken. So he just kind of fell by the wayside, unfortunately. And his height probably worked against him there. But generally was kind of the consensus draftable talent this year. And finally, the last player I'll highlight is probably not a massive shock, but one player I did expect to get drafted, and that is Jack Callan from Tasmania. He is a son of a gun. His dad played for the Adelaide Crows, and he's kind of from South Australia too, but uh, went through the Tassie Devils um, during his playing career. But he's 179 centimeter, small forward that can play some midfield as well. But another player with great goal sense and footy IQ, and uh, his ability to crumb as well is a big feature. He had a pretty solid year this year, kicking 23 goals from 11 games. He represented the allies of the under 18s championships and uh, was also part of the National Academy. So it's a little bit of a surprise to see him not picked up at all in either the national or the rookie drafts as well. He was always a late to rookie option, but again, one player considering there wasn't a whole heap of small forward options that certainly compared to smaller defenders. I thought he was a chance and he missed out. So those are probably the, that's the list completed of players that I expected to get drafted that didn't. But I'm sure there's heaps that I missed because uh, we're always going to have our own different viewpoints on this. So as always, guys, I appreciate you watching for a start. Uh, but if also you want to let me know in the comments any other players that you expected to get drafted. But as always, guys, I appreciate you very much. If you're looking for more draft content, I've made three videos today if you want to go check them out. Otherwise, I'll just see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.